All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna talk about something I get commented over and over and over. Elliot, what size ski should I get? What length should my skis be? We're gonna talk about that. Now, I've seen a lot of videos that cover this. I've seen Stomp It tutorials. I think that's the one where there's a guy from England and a guy from Sweden and the guy puts down this whole formula. If you're gonna do this, then take two centimeters. If you're gonna do this, add three centimeters. It, and that is insane to me. I did the math and some of them had kind of gaps in it from what I would say. But let me tell you how I pick what size skis I have because I have a very different method to it. I have like some methods that are really old school, but my opinions on it aren't very popular compared to what I see online. So. Let's start out with my height and what I ski on. I am six foot one or 185 centimeters and I ski on a 176 for the Atomic Maverick 88 Ti. This is a perfect ski for out west because it skis on the groomers really well, it carves really well, which is what I like. I have a racing background, but it also allows me to go off trail if there's fresh snow. So I can kind of combine the on trail lines with the off trail lines and be able to access the entire mountain. So that's what I ski on. I like 176 because it allows me to get borderline slalom turns, but also GS turns. I can really kind of crank that radius but then also go fast and the 176 gives me enough length that I can be stable at speed. It's not the best flotation and it's also not the best for like going straight down the hill and going really fast. For what I like it's perfect. I like being able to make quick turns. I'm pretty close to a 180 so I can still go fast when I want to. I can carve and make low radius GS turns. This is 176 in my mind perfect for me, especially on trail. So yeah, six foot one, 176. In the race world, on my slalom skis, I'd be on a 165. So I don't want that short because as much as I love slalom turns, and that was kind of my favorite discipline when I skied in college, I want a little bit more length and a little bit more stability. I could go as short as 172 if I needed to test something. So here's a simple marker for it. If I'm looking at a carving ski, I'm looking at having it be right between my eyebrows. I think that's a good healthy length for carving. And then when I'm looking at powder, I wanted to go to the top of my head. So that's kind of the range. If you're a beginner, I would suggest going more with your chin because you're just trying to be able to figure out how to get those skis around. But if you're more advanced in your carving, yeah, anywhere between your chin and your nose is a pretty healthy spot. And then for powder skis, I like the top of my head. I've heard people say like beginner, intermediate, expert, but it also just depends on what you want out of the ski. If you want a shorter turning radius, you want a shorter ski. If you want to float more, you want a little bit longer ski. So just kind of prioritize what you're doing with the ski before you just get set on exactly what size. Especially if you're demoing, there's no reason to be that picky about skis. You know, sometimes you just gotta kind of get within that range. For me right now, honestly, I can ski anything from a 172 to a 193. Now, I've had powder skis that were 193. I had the Rosignol B3 Bandits, and those are 193. They were very wide. They were just kind of big boat holes. And while it was fun to ski, especially in the powder, when I was learning powder, I'm grateful that I had those skis. I did feel very limited when I went into the trees on those. So, you know, you, there's give and take on everything. I think if I'm giving advice as far as what you should get for length, I think you just need to be really honest with yourself about what's your priority. Is your priority flotation? Yeah, maybe add a little bit of length but if you're really just gonna be someone like me where you're on the groomers or you want to be able to go in the trees and have a lot of flexibility with your turn shape be a little bit more conservative with your length I think a lot of people get skis that are way too long and this is kind of something that's taught to us as kids oh well you're growing we need to get you a new ski we need you to get you a bigger ski and people just kind of walk themselves up into these really really long skis and it seems like overkill now if you're someone who's just skiing you know big powder lines and you've got a 193 that's awesome and I've had those skis and I like that. But if you're somebody who really wants to just lay it over on the groomed runs, if you're somebody who wants to improve on your carving, I don't know, like a 170, somebody my height, I think 176 is awesome. If you're a little bit shorter than me, you're like 5'10", um, 176, 172 is fine. And there's a lot that goes into the ski. How stiff is it? You know, are you using the extra length to give yourself a little bit more leverage? I've seen people who are shorter than me that ran the same length as me or longer. Some of it is just gonna come over time of getting a feel for what you like. People get into such an ego trip of needing longer and longer skis that they do themselves a disservice with their turning because they're not able to load the ski and get a sharp turn. They've got these big 185, 188 skis, but they're not patient enough to, for the ski to come all the way around. So they never are quite carving, they're always kind of having to wash out their turns. That's just my two cents. I think that if a lot of people took their skis down five centimeters, they'd enjoy a better carve out of their turn. 
rather than having to wash their turns out all the time. For the powder, I totally get it. I'm not critiquing anyone there. I understand wanting a longer ski. And especially with the skis being rockered, right? You don't feel the length as much as you used to, but I still think for carving, if you wanna carve well, don't go overboard with your length and balance the length with the width. If you have a really wide ski, like let's say I was running an Atomic Maverick 100 Ti, well it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a super short ski because it's so wide. What I'm wanting out of that ski is a little bit of extra flotation, so I might as well take advantage of that extra width and get a little bit of extra length. But make sure that like, if I'm buying that ski, I know what I'm using it for. I'm not using it to kind of pin my carving on the groomers. I'm gonna use that as primarily flotation with some fun kind of zippy turns here and there. But I'm not, that's not its primary purpose. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is a powder ski. Its primary purpose is flotation. I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra length of that width. Whereas with my Atomic Maverick 88 Ti's, those are carving primarily, and then they also can kind of do some flotation. So give your ski a primary role and then pick the width and the length accordingly. And that's why it's so hard for people to just tell you easily yeah you need this length because it totally depends on what you're doing with the ski I can't just say oh if you're six foot you need a 180 it's like yeah that would kind of hit the mark for everyone but if you were on a powder ski you might like a 185 more if you're on a carving ski you might like a 174 something like that so it just completely depends on what you're doing with the ski and what's its primary focus and all the time when I get ski recommendations, I say the same thing to people. When they ask me for ski suggestions, I go, what are you using the ski for? What do you care about getting out of your ski? If I care about flotation and easy side-to-side -side turns and comfortable turns, I'm gonna go with the QST. That's its primary purpose is to go in the trees and in the woods and in the powder. If I care about carving with light access to the woods, I'm going with the Atomic Maverick. So each ski kind of has a primary purpose. If I was going for like a crud cutter ski where it's gonna be in the Pacific Northwest and I want to go through the slush and I want to go through some of the icy spots, I'm gonna go with a Vocal Mantra or a K2 Mindbender. Skis designs can kind of be taken advantage of. What environment does the ski thrive the most in? I've seen the other reviews online. I saw the out of collective where he goes beginner, intermediate, advanced, and that's kind of accurate. Like you can kind of look at that, but it's so simple that it ends up missing some of the nuance. This is the way that I do it. Carving ski, tree powder ski. That's how I do it. I go, okay, I don't want it to be too big. I don't want it to be overboard. If I was going cat skiing or heli skiing, yeah, I would go with like a 190 easily. 188, 193, no problem. But for what I'm doing is accessing the trails and the powder via the chairlift, I want room to get in between the trees and I want to be able to float as well. So I run a 182 in a 106 width because that's perfect for me. Think about what you're gonna use the ski for first and then follow that model. So again, if you're gonna be carving, I would go slalom, GS, super G. And if I'm in the woods, I would do moguls, tree powder, cat skiing. Because you know, you want more flotation versus maneuverability between the trees, between those tight turns. So anyway, I know this is kind of a different sort of video than you might be used to. I just wanted to provide some value to you because if you're asking this question, if you're looking for skis, especially while they're still cheap right now, hopefully this can help you. Be careful. If you have a ski shop that you trust, they'll typically do well by you. But I've been in ski shops where they're at the end of the year and they're trying to move inventory. And I've had ski shops suggest skis that were way too big for me, were not at all what I was looking for with carving because they have to move inventory before it goes on sale and they take a hit on it. So I've had people all the time look at me six foot one and go, oh, there's my guy. Time to get rid of these long skis. And for me, those skis don't serve me the best. It might be easier for their inventory, but it's not good for me. So be careful with that. If you have somebody good and reputable, that's awesome. They'll probably steer you in the right direction. But be wary that sometimes the ski shop's priority isn't to give you the best fit, it's to get rid of inventory and get those skis out the door. So the other thing we have to talk about is width. Now width could probably be its whole own video, honestly, but I've just seen so many videos with kind of, I don't know if misleading is the right word, but things that are a little bit off compared to what I would say for width. So let's talk about width. If you have a race ski, so like a USSA legal ski, or 65 millimeters underfoot. So I'm coming from a race background where that's what I'm used to is around 65 millimeters. So in my opinion, if you're really focused on carving, narrower skis from 65 to 90 are gonna feel pretty good because essentially what you're getting is you're getting not a lot of base, not a lot of width from edge to edge. So it takes a little bit less energy to go from one edge to the other. It can allow you kind of tighter radius turns. If you're looking for a performance 
carving ski, I would say look at something under 90 millimeters underfoot. I think that's gonna be kind of a healthy range with less width, having really, really narrow skis, you're gonna have less diversity. If you've ever done a ski camp up at Mount Hood where you were on race skis, they really don't do well with poor snow conditions at the end of the day, right? Because they just kind of sink straight into the powder. You get responsiveness going from edge to edge. It takes less time to start your turn and go edge to edge, but you lose some of that flotation and some of the diversity that the ski's gonna offer you. Me personally, on my daily driver, I've had 90 underfoot, 88 now underfoot. I think that that's perfect. That's what I like because it's gonna give me enough diversity off trail that I can still enjoy most of the mountain where I am out west. But, you know, if I was just back east and I was only doing groom runs all day, I'd be fine with like, you know, 75, 80, Anything lower than that I think would still be a lot of fun. Now, let's talk about the wider, more powder-driven skis. Here I have my Salmon QST 106. This is my designated powder ski. Now with this width, this is 106 underfoot. This is definitely a wider ski. I didn't go for the blank, which is even wider. I went for the 106 because I still wanted some of that shape so I can carve, you know, and get a clean turn on the trail. But that's not what these are for. These are primarily for in the powder and in the trees. Once you get past the 88, then you're gonna look at 90s, 95, and then once you go over 100, that's when you kind of get into the powder. 100 and less, you're still kind of in the all mountain category. It might take a little bit more time to get your turns. You're probably gonna be looking at more like long GS turns when you're carving, but still a great performance ski. And different skis will feel different in each turn based on some of the structure and design, but I'm painting with a broad brush for the sake of explaining width. Now, once you get over 100, that's where you start to get into the powder ski territory. These are a 106, you could go to a 110, 120 even. I think they even go wider than that. But really, that's kind of overkill. When you're looking at powder skis, you want to be looking at 100 to 120. Now, how much you need, I think if you want a powder ski, 95, 100 and up is perfectly fine. You don't get that many powder days that would justify you skiing on a 110 every day. That just doesn't make sense. A 120, I see people daily driving 120s up at my home mountain, that makes zero sense to me. I would rather have a 100 or a 106 like these for powder days, and then if the powder's not great, you can still enjoy the day, or if the conditions get worse, you can still enjoy the groomed runs. Once you get to 110, then that's a pretty dedicated powder. And then once you get to 120, it becomes more and more dedicated to its purpose, which is powder. It's kind of the same thing for narrow skis. The narrower they get, the more dedicated they are to just carving. I would say 120 is kind of overkill for most people, unless you're like going cat skiing, or unless you're going heli skiing, or you're just doing these for just powder, and that's their only purpose, and you really just want a really wide, fun ski, go for it. I think if you want a powder ski and you get anything over 100 to 110, that's my sweet spot. I think that's perfect because I want a little bit of diversity from the ski. I still believe in dedicated skis. I run an 88 Ti for my daily driver and then a 106 for the powder days, but some people take it to more extremes. For myself, for my daily driver, I have an 88 Ti. Because I'm in the west, because we get a lot of snow out here, my daily is an 88 underfoot. If I was back home in the east, probably a 76 would be my daily driver. And then I have like kind of in reserve for big powder days, a 106. So I kind of find a sweet spot with the width and the length. So if I was making recommendations, if you're in the East Coast, what I would do is I would probably get like an 80, around 80 millimeter underfoot for my daily driver. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And then if you wanted to get like a powder ski, because I do get some powder, maybe get like an Atomic Maverick 100 Ti or an M6 Mantra. Around 100 would be fine. There's hardly any days where you would even notice something wider being beneficial. If you're on the West Coast, what I do is I do an 88 underfoot for my daily driver and then a 106 for the powder days. I'm a little conservative just because I do want the ski to be able to turn. If I can't turn it on the groomed runs, it feels like a bad ski but that's just my personal opinion. I can understand people having 120s, especially if they're out in Alaska or if they're doing really big runs. Probably if you're on the West Coast, I would say daily driver, keep it under 95, powder ski, keep it around 110. You also wanna be able to ski to your ability. If you are a beginner and you go out and get a pair of Atomic Bent 120s, it's gonna be just really daunting to turn those all the time. You're gonna be constantly working to go from edge to edge. You're just making your life harder and you're not even gonna be able to really enjoy the benefits of a big powder ski because you're not there yet. If you're beginner to intermediate, you're really not going off trail enough to enjoy that. Take that into account too. 
I've also read some articles that people are starting to get injured from having too wide of skis as their daily drivers. People who are daily driving 110s, 120s, they're starting to feel on their knees and their hips because it's just ergonomically not comfortable on their hips or their body to have to go edge to edge that much. And I daily drove a Rossignol B3 Bandit at 193 that was really wide and it didn't feel good all the time on my knees. Get a ski that's appropriate for what you're actually taking it for. I know a lot of people on Instagram like to live in this dream world that we're all doing big powder and we're all heli skiing all the time, but be realistic. When I ski in Idaho, my daily driver, there's not always powder. A lot of it is just actually spending time on groomed run. And then this year we had a really good snow year. I found myself going more and more off trail. And while the skis did great for it most of the time, there were a couple of days where I was really getting bogged down. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna get a designated powder ski for maybe 20% of those days, but I wanna be able to enjoy them fully. Be realistic, actually kind of take stock of where you're skiing most of the time, rather than where your fantasy is to be skiing all the time. So anyway, like I said before, different kind of content, but I hope that helped. As always, thank you so much for watching my content. It really means a lot to me that you guys watch these videos. Um, more than anything, I just really appreciate that. If you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out in return, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.